Well, there you have it, guys and gals. Six reasons why you should not buy a Kawasaki ZZR 1400. Hey, that's complete and utter bullshit. You can't say that about the ZZR 1400. It's a legend. Sorry, mate, I was just trying to be honest. And I did say at the end of the video that this is one of the best motorcycles in the world. You did watch the end of the video, didn't you? You watched the end of the video, didn't you? I didn't need to, you moron. I got to the bit about speeding tickets and I just had enough of it. I've had it up to here with your bullshit. Take it all back. No, no, I'm not going to take any, anything that I said back. As there's loads of really good information in there that some people would find useful, despite how good it is. Don't make me come over there and take this bike away from you, 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 you goblin. All right, all right. How about this? How about I make a video explaining why this is one of the best motorcycles in the world? Would that be all right for yeah, you? Yeah, you better do. Otherwise, you will be hearing from me again. Yeah, I bet I will. What did you no, say? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Look, how about I make a video giving you six reasons why this, why you need a Kawasaki ZZR 1400 in your life. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah, that should do. And don't say anything about the Hayabusa. It's a sh bike. I quite like it. No, no, you don't like the Hayabusa. Some dickhead at Suzuki took a sh put two wheels on it and called it a motorcycle. You do not want to say anything about the Hayabusa. Just pretend it doesn't all even right, exist. All right. Have a good day now. Don't tell me what to do. Over the last year, we've done a load of content around the Kawasaki ZZR 1400. In one of our earliest videos, we gave you six reasons why you should not buy one. And man, you ZZR lovers were absolutely disgusted by that video. So as a ZZR lover myself, we decided to satisfy the negative commenters on that video and make a list of reasons why you totally need one. If you love this motorcycle as much as we do and can't get enough of it, make sure to hit like, get subscribed, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our future ZZR uploads. All right, let's jump in and give you six reasons why you need a Kawasaki ZZR 1400 in your life. Now, for those of you that watched to the end of our video on why you shouldn't buy a ZX14, you'll notice that I said it is one of the best motorcycles in the world, despite some of its drawbacks. I'm betting some of you got confused by that statement. Let me explain. The very first reason why is the experience. In the past, I've said a lot of wacky things about the ZZR 1400 with regard to how it feels to ride. In a word, it's an absolute dream. It's basically the total package, all you'll ever need or want in a motorcycle. It has the power you want for when you're looking to have a bit of fun. It handles like a motorcycle that weighs 60 kilograms less. The suspension can be adjusted to be firmer or softer depending on the kind of riding you like to do. And even though its size might look intimidating, riding one of these beasts is still totally doable if you are a smaller person. It is without a doubt up there as one of the ultimate riding experiences. If you've not ridden one before and you're looking for that next step up from a 900 or a 1000 cc, you need to give the ZZR 1400 a go. Once you've got a taste for it, trust me, you will want it in your garage. Adding to the whole experience is the sound this monster produces. Imagine watching a Godzilla movie and you hear the epic roar that it makes. Basically what you can expect, even though the performance sport model of the ZZR 1400 comes with those Akrapovic exhausts from stock, the standard model exhausts still sound amazing, arguably one of the best sounding motorcycles in the world in my opinion, certainly some of the loudest I've heard on a stock motorcycle. Now of course that statement is up for debate, so let me know in the comments the best sounding motorcycle you have ever heard. I unfortunately don't have a decibel meter to measure it, but anywhere you go, the sound of the ZZR 1400 can be heard from pretty far away. When I'm on my way to work, all the staff know that I've arrived. You'll find a lot of 600 and 1000 cc sport bikes also make pretty loud noises, but they normally need to be at higher RPMs before they start becoming obnoxious, unless you have something aftermarket. On the ZZR 1400, it is just awesomely loud, even at idle, so be warned, 
You might love the sound of your wicked ZZR, but your neighbours might not be so happy with it. Even though in the previous video I mentioned about the power being a potential problem for less experienced riders, it's actually very predictable. The power delivery of the ZZR 1400 is very linear, it is an easy motorcycle to predict when it comes to throttle response, even though there's a ton of torque on tap throughout the entire range in every gear. <laughs> you certainly don't get that all or nothing feeling as you do with some other bikes, so you do have the opportunity to ease yourself into riding it. That said, I can't state enough the level of respect and control you need to have on this motorcycle. It can be impossible to control if you're stupid with it, so please keep in mind that even though getting used to the power delivery of the ZZR is fairly straightforward, it is still very easy to get yourself carried away by your thirst for power. Remember this is certainly not a beginner motorcycle, so if you're looking at one of these as your first, second or even third motorcycle, please look away and find a bike that is within your experience level. Any dealership should be able to advise you on this. Then after a few years, you shouldn't have any problems with enough hours on the saddle. Look guys, I'm only saying this to protect you. There are too many riders that get motorcycles well outside their experience level and it ends up very badly for them. So please be sensible guys and gals, we all want you to have the longest riding careers possible. Whilst we are on the topic of power, it is worth mentioning that my ZH2 feels significantly harder to predict in terms of throttle response and power delivery. There have been many occasions where I find myself pulling wheelies totally by accident on the ZH2, even though the ZR 1400 has significantly more torque and horsepower on paper. But if you're thinking that the power modes will help you ease into it, I'm sorry to say that there's very little to no difference in throttle feel between the low and full power modes on the ZR 1400. The more modern ZH2 on the other hand has power modes that are actually usable and you really feel the difference between them. Make sure to go check out our ZH2 power mode test video afterwards, I'll leave it in the top corner for you. The next confusing and wonderful thing I want you to try and grasp about this motorcycle is how comfortable it is. How many of you have ridden a 600 or 1000 sport bike? Now tell me in the comments how many of you found them comfortable. I'm guessing most of you will agree when I say a sport bike is not comfortable. Anyone that tells you otherwise is probably lying to themselves. Don't get me wrong, I spent hours and hours every week riding my old CBR 600RR and I loved every moment of it. But when I'd get off that and jump on the ZZR 1400, the difference was stark between the two. A comfortable sport bike. I mean it just boggles the mind. Being in that forward leaning position encouraging you to tuck in and foot pegs that are pretty high up doesn't scream comfort, but nonetheless, it is. Truly, so much so that many of you ZZR lovers consider it to be a sport tourer or hyper tourer. I have always and always will regard this machine to be a sport bike, not just because of its sport seating position or its power, but also because of how well it handles. The Kawasaki ZZR 1400 handles like a race bike, Flicking it into corners at high speeds is a doddle, getting those fat lean angles is a dream, and you won't even be scraping the foot pegs until your head is touching the ground. Okay, I may be exaggerating on that last bit, and I'm sure if you were going to take this bike on a track regularly, then you would want some higher foot pegs, firmer suspension, and some new braking components. But even so, you could easily track day this bike without any modifications if you're just doing it for a bit of fun and want to push its boundaries. Many reviewers have been surprised by how well the ZZR 1400 performs on track compared to other sport bikes, even though she's significantly heavier and less nimble than a 1000. I haven't personally taken my ZZR on track, yet, but I can still attest to how well it handles for street riding. It's certainly not like trying to lug around some big adventure bike, tourer or cruiser. The final reason why you need a ZZR 1400 in your life is its legacy. The next few years will be perhaps the last where you'll be able to buy one from new. It is already no longer available in the UK and Europe because of emission laws, but if you're lucky enough to live in a country where you can still buy this legendary motorcycle, make sure to get one whilst you can, or at least test ride one, you won't be disappointed. The one downside to buying one now is perhaps its lack of modern features as seen in its main competitor, the third generation Hayabusa. <laughs> Oops, I wasn't meant to mention that bike, was I? <laughs> 
But it is true that a lot of potential buyers are looking for those modern creature comforts, such as a TFT display, cruise control, launch control, etc. None of which are present on the current ZZR 1400. But by the same token, you may be one of those riders that doesn't want all those electronic features getting in the way of your riding experience. And of course, you may have noticed the substantial difference in performance there is now between the 3rd gen Hayabusa and the current gen ZR 1400, on paper at least. And to be fair, you probably wouldn't feel much difference in performance between the two in regular street riding. Who knows, maybe we will see a 3rd generation ZX14, fingers crossed on that one, but it is unlikely. The Kawasaki ZZR 1400 is without a doubt a modern classic, and sadly there aren't that many people talking about it. I think the Goblin Rides channel produces more content around this motorcycle than any other motorcycle YouTube channel combined. It's a real shame that even though every reviewer that gets their hands on one of these all say how great it is, but I still don't think it gets anywhere near the credit it deserves. And channels like Yami Noob, who have a massive influence within the motorcycle community, almost completely disregard it. If you guys and gals agree that this legend deserves its place in the halls of fame, let me know in the comments, hit like, get subscribed, and help me put this motorcycle back on the map as the one that was, and always will be, the Hayabusa Killer. Thanks for watching.